Hi students, good morning, good afternoon. My name is Noman Badar and today this is my fifth lecture of industrial management. In this lecture we will discuss multiple choice questions of project management. And before that we will discuss some theories and we will see introduction about project management. Then we will solve questions. So we can start now. In this first slide I have shown here two techniques. Two techniques are which are uh, for project management first technique is CPM then we have part program evaluation technique this is CPM then we have part these are two techniques which are used to find out project duration these are the techniques which are used to find out project duration CPM as you know CPM is critical path method then we have Proja program evaluation and review technique these two methods are used to find out project duration okay then uh, what are the principal feature of pod the principal feature of pod is that its time estimates are probabilistic you have to keep in mind you have to know that and you must know that what do you mean by probabilistic the time estimates here in the pod is not fixed they are uncertain you are uh, you don't know you do not have the certainty about the time of different activities the, uh, the time duration of activities may fluctuate okay so the activity time estimates are probabilistic they are not certain the activities uh, which are solved or which are which we see in per techniques that the activity time do not have certain time uh, the completion time of different activities are not certain so that's why per technique has its time estimates as probabilistic means activity time of power do not have certain time they have variation in time fluctuation in time so that's why part activity time estimates are probabilistic and then we have and then we have second point in second point you can see after that the activity time in CPM applications were relatively less certain but in case of CPM uh, the activity time they have less certain they are less certain in CPM applications and thus of all deterministic in nature so activity time here we know about the finishing of the different activities in CPM that's why their time estimates are deterministic in nature you uh, you know uh, time at uh, different uh, time of different activities in CPM okay that's why they are they are certain they are less uncertain okay this is the main difference between CPM and part the basic difference is that in part time active activity time estimates are probabilistic activity time is not fixed they are uncertain but in case of CPM activity time estimate are deterministic in nature uh, you know about the finishing time or rough time of different activities in CPM applications now fourth point we have with the passage of time part and CPM applications start overlapping now they are used almost as a single techniques now they are used as a single technique and difference between the two is of only historical and academic interest so we today we use CPM and part uh, why uh, CPM and part we used uh, and uh, nowadays they are uh, they do not have much more difference they are of only historical and academic interest there is a, not a very huge difference between part and CPM the only difference is of their activity time estimates part is probabilistic in nature and for CPM it is deterministic in nature as uh, I have shown in fifth point difference between CPM and part main difference is that you know part activity time is probabilistic means the activity time is not certain but in CPM activity it is of deterministic in nature you know the uh, exact duration of different activities in CPM the other difference is that in part event is uh, part is event oriented okay while CPM is activity oriented in CPM we actually know the activity time so that's why uh, CPM is activity oriented because we know actually actual time of activities in CPM and part is uh, event event oriented because in part we do not know the actual time of different activities so we can move to next slide time in part in CPM as I have already told you uh, CPM they have deterministic time but in part they are probabilistic time as you can see I have written here also in second point part all activity time is probabilistic okay 
and for CPM it is deterministic in nature you know exact time of different activities in case of CPM for part employees what part employees part employees beta distribution for the time expectation for activity the uh, for time activity uh, part employees beta distribution okay and they have three time estimates in part we have three time estimates optimistic time most likely time and pessimistic time what do you mean by these three time we have three time estimates in part we have three time estimates in part what are those three time estimates and what do you mean by those time estimates but in cpm we have only one time estimate okay we do not have three time estimate keep in mind we have only one time estimate in case of cpm we have only one time state estimate in cpm but for part we have three time estimates and these three time estimates i have written here these are three time estimates in case of part if everything in the project goes well optimistic time means uh, if you have uh, your project is going smoothly there is no any kind of error or accident and nothing your project is going smooth uh, it is going very well so you will complete your project within the defined time and there is uh, second is most likely time in this time it is the time for completing an activity that is best and you will complete the project within uh, with the defined time you have defined or you have uh, predicted the time and you are finishing your project uh, closely to that time so that time is are known as most likely time pessimistic time is that time if everything in the pro project goes wrong if uh, you are facing an error you are, uh, you are you are facing an accident so in that case your project is taking the defined more than the defined time or more than the predicted time predicted time so this this is the pessimistic time when your project goes wrong everything goes wrong and you know most likely time is the is equal is uh, mostly equal to defined time or predicted time you are finishing or you are completing your job or project uh, as you have defined or predicted and you are doing your job then uh, that time is known as most likely time and optimistic time is that time if the everything in the project goes well and everything is going very well and you are completing or finishing your project within the defined or predicted time okay so we have uh, discuss second slide then we can now we can go to third slide in third slide here i have discussed in part the completion time for project has a normal distribution keep in mind for completion time of project is normal distribution but for an activity it is an beta distribution see completion of project has normal distribution in part and complete and activity for an activity we have beta distribution so this is the we are using uh, we are seeing and we are facing we have two time kinds of distribution normal distribution for the whole project and for the an activity we have beta distribution it follows beta di distribution okay then we have critical path what do you mean by critical path critical path is the is on the network of project activities which takes the longest time from start to finish to so critical path critical path is what do you mean by critical path critical path is that path of the network of network diagram or precedence diagram which gives us the project duration it is the longest or you can say longest duration or longest time from start to finish see uh, if i will draw a network here See here, I have drawn a network here, and this is activity A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. We have so many activities, and this we have a network here. So we have here different kinds of path. We can have from starting from start from here zero to finally. We can have so many paths. We can go from forward by using by different paths. For uh, for example, we can have first path as A, B, and C. Then we can have f g and h we can also have a e p c or we can have a e g h so these are the different paths we can have uh, for part uh, for network analysis for network diagram so in uh, for all we will see or we will consider we will find out the time duration of all the paths and we uh, and whichever path is taking the longest time so that is the critical path that will define the date of the finishing of the project if we delay the activities of those this uh, that critical path then your project will be delayed 
because critical path is taking longest time and if you are delaying the activities which are on critical path then your project will be delayed so we need to focus on critical path we will find critical path critical path is that path which takes the longest time from starting to finish in network analysis in network diagram or precedence diagram after that we have next point critical path in the network is that sequence of activities and events where there is no slack no slack means in critical path we do not have any extra time because critical path is critical is critical there we do not have any extra time to delay any activity if you will delay any activity then your project will be delayed so we do not have any slack we cannot sit down and take rest for critical path we need to complete all the activities of critical path with the defined time or with the within the limits if we will delay the activities of the critical path then our project will be delayed okay and then we have next point if any activity on the critical path gets delayed by tx time if you are delaying any activity of critical path by some some time like tx time then the total project will be delayed by tx time as i have told you earlier if you will delay the activity of critical path then your project will be delayed by same time okay same is not true for activities which are not lying on the critical path and the activities which are not lying on the critical path you can delay them they can have some slack they can have some uh, extra time but the activities which are lying on the critical path they cannot be delayed you cannot delay those activities next point is which is last point critical part determines the focal activities critical what critical part do critical part determines the fo focal activities for which no tolerance in terms of delay is desirable so we cannot delay we do not have tolerance in terms of delaying we cannot delay the activities of critical path okay now we can move to next slide now this uh, we have discussed uh, some basic theories about cpm and pod now we will discuss questions so uh, my first question is in inventory control theory economic uh, this is of inventory control topic in this topic he is uh, it is asking that economic order quantity what is economic order quantity option is average level of inventory then we have optimum lot size then lot size corresponding to break even analysis then fourth option is capacity of a warehouse so in inventory control theory inventory control theory is what you have studied in unit 3 inventory control theory is that theory which uh, tells us or we which defines the what should be the lot size what should be the optimum lot size it optimizes the lot size as uh, you can remember it or you please memorize it in economic order quantities though on that quantity is that quantity of the inventory what is inventory inventory is the stock which and you used to keep in your factory or in companies we have some inventories so what should be the economic order quantity what should we should order so that should be the optimum lot size obviously that should be the optimum lot size you can see in the second slide they i have shown answer here in economic uh, in inventory control theory the economic order quantity is the optimum lot size and I have also shown here explanation economic order quantity is that size of order which minimizes total annual cost of carrying inventory and cost of ordering under the assumed conditions of certainty and annual demands so economic order quantity is nothing but the optimum lot size optimum lot size means what we must order so that we have we have uh, we are optimizing both thing annual cost of carrying if you are ordering something and we are we are having an inventory then what we have to pay something for that we will pay the carrying cost of that inventory so and uh, cost of ordering also we should we we want to minimize carrying in carrying cost of inventory and we also want to minimize cost of ordering so what we key can we do see if we uh, if we uh, order too much so we need to carry that so for carrying that our co carrying cost will be higher and but if we are ordering too much then at the same time we will have some uh, less cost because if we are ordering too much then we will get those items in less price because if uh, we are ordering in huge amount then we will get some discount so in that case we need to minimize one thing Let's see if we are increasing the lot size then what is happening carrying cost is increasing but at the same time uh, carrying cost is increasing or holding cost is increasing but what is happening 
ordering cost is decreasing if we are ordering in huge amount then our cost will be decreased so we need to optimize those these two things we show we do not want higher ordering cost and we also do not want higher uh, carrying cost so we want to optimize these two things we want to be in between these two we do not want higher carrying cost and we do not want more ordering cost we want less ordering uh, ordering cost and uh, uh, less ordering ordering cost and less carrying cost so we want to be in between these two then we will uh, find out the optimum lot size which will give us economic order quantity so that economic lot size is that optimum size which we should order so that we can minimize our total cost of carrying of inventory and at the same time we are having we are getting more discount on ordering cost of ordering under the assumed condition and condition is that we, our demand is annual demand is fixed we have fixed annual demand so economic order quantity is nothing but it is the optimum lot size okay in next slide we have next question what is that classify items in a b and c categories for selective control and inventory management is done by arranging items in descending order of it is a question of abc analysis and it is asking that yeah, we have three categories of items in abc analysis so it is asking that by arranging them in the decrease in which order or by which way we arrange abc items we have a category items we have b category items we have c category items for abc analysis in inventory control so how they are arranged it is asking about it is saying the like option one on the basis of total inventory cost or item value annual uses value or item demand so you can see the answer in next slide we used to arrange we used to arrange those abc items on the basis of we used to arrange items we used to arrange items on the basis of their annual uses value as you can see in next slide i will show you this with the example c in abc analysis the common and important of the selective inventory control of abc uh, the common and important of the selected inventory is abc analysis abc analysis done for items on a stock and basis of analysis is the annual consumption in terms of money value uh, so it's a basis abc analysis is based on the annual consumption in terms of money value for example uh, here you can see in the graph control of a items category a items are those items 10 percent of item consist of 70 percent cost you can see here items which are lying till here the a category items the percentage of inventory they are very less in number but their cost is too much they are about 70 percent of the total cost they are having 70 percent of the total cost they are known as eight items a category items they are less in numbers but they are having uh, their investment investment is too much in terms of money they are taking 70 percent of the total investment category b items are they are of uh, twenty percent of total items and their cost is also of twenty percent of total investment and then we have c category items they are of more than seventy percent or in numbers they are in some more than seventy percent in numbers and their cost is about ten percent of the total investment so we are uh, arranging or we are setting a b and c category items on the basis of their annual uses value in terms of money which category has high value which category has a moderate value then which category has low value and you can say that you can see here abc analysis category a category b category c so for category a we have high value inventory items for category b moderate value items and then we have category c low value inventory items okay so we can see here answer is annual uses value in terms of money we are arranging a b c and category items in the descending order of annual uses value okay in terms of money then we have a question on the of inventory control this is question number three annual demand for our project costing less uh, we have a project cost which is itna cost the and demand is 900 ordering cost per order is itna we have also given ordering cost and inventory holding cost is also given this much so in this question it wants to find us economic order quantity and for this we have a formula 2 d c naught upon ch here demand we know demand is 900 
एंड इट इन दिस क्वेश्चन वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट इकोनॉमिक लॉट साइज और इकोनॉमिक ऑर्डर क्वान्टिटी बाई हाउ मच इन नंबर्स वी हैव वी शुड वी शुड डिमांड वी शुड ऑर्डर इन द लॉट साइज विल बी हाउ मच सो दैट वी कैन ऑर्डर दैट लॉट साइज एंड वी आर ऑप्टिमाइजिंग बोथ थिंग्स ऑर्डरिंग कॉस्ट प्लस होल्डिंग कॉस्ट वी आर इन बिटवीन दोज टू कॉस्ट वी हैव डिमांड हेयर गिवन विच इज़ नाइन हंड्रेड एंड सी नॉट इज ऑर्डरिंग कॉस्ट पर ऑर्डर विच इज़ हंड्रेड एंड देन वी हैव इन्वेंट्री कैरिंग कॉस्ट इज विच इज़ टू सो इन द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड आई विल शो यू द सोल्यूशन एंड यू कैन सी हेयर इट सोल्यूशन इज हेयर वी हैव टू डी सी नॉट एंड सी सी एच वी हैव दिस इज द फॉर्मूला एंड वी कैन अप्लाई दिस फॉर्मूला हेयर सी टू टाइम्स इन टू डी इज नाइन हंड्रेड एंड देन वी हैव सी सी ओ कैरिंग कॉस्ट इज हंड्रेड एंड देन वी कैन डिवाइड बाई टू एंड देन वी विल टेक इट्स अंडर रूट सो वट विल बी इट्स वैल्यू वट विल वट वी विल गेट वी विल गेट टू एंड टू विल बी कैंसिल आउट दैन वी विल हैव इट विल गिव अस थ्री हंड्रेड ओके सो वी हैव वी शुड ऑर्डर इन इन अ लॉट एंड लॉट साइज इज थ्री हंड्रेड वी शुड ऑर्डर वी शुड ऑर्डर लॉट विच विल कंसिस्ट थ्री हंड्रेड आइटम्स आइटम्स विल बी ऑफ थ्री हंड्रेड द क्वान्टिटी ऑफ दैट लॉट विल बी थ्री हंड्रेड सो वी विल ऑर्डर इन टर्म्स ऑफ थ्री हंड्रेड इफ सी एयर वी हैव एनुअल डिमांड डिमांड इज नाइन हंड्रेड एंड आर फर्स्ट ऑर्डर इकोनॉमिक्स लॉट साइज विल बी ऑफ थ्री हंड्रेड सो वी विल हाउ मच टाइम्स वी हैव नीड टू ऑर्डर वी विल ऑर्डर थ्री टाइम्स बिकॉज सी नाइन हंड्रेड इज द टोटल डिमांड एंड थ्री हंड्रेड वी आर ऑर्डरिंग फर्स्ट सो वी विल हैव टू ऑर्डर थ्री टाइम्स ओके एंड इट विल बी ऑप्टिमाइज आर कॉस्ट नाउ फोर्थ क्वेश्चन इकोनॉमिक ऑर्डर क्वान्टिटी इज द क्वान्टिटी एट विच कॉस्ट ऑफ कैरिंग इज इट इज आस्किंग दैट वट इज इकोनॉमिक ऑर्डर क्वान्टिटी इकोनॉमिक ऑर्डर क्वान्टिटी इज द क्वान्टिटी एट विच कॉस्ट ऑफ कैरिंग इकोनॉमिक ऑर्डर क्वान्टिटी एज आई हैव टोल्ड यू इकोनॉमिक ऑर्डर क्वान्टिटी इज दैट क्वान्टिटी विच इज फाइंड आउट विच इज डिफाइंड टू ऑप्टिमाइज टू थिंग्स कॉस्ट ऑफ कैरिंग कॉस्ट ऑफ कैरिंग प्लस कॉस्ट ऑफ ऑर्डरिंग सो एट ई ओ क्यू एट दिस पॉइंट एट ई ओ क्यू बोथ द कॉस्ट आर सेम कॉस्ट ऑफ कैरिंग एंड इट इज इक्वल टू कॉस्ट ऑफ ऑर्डरिंग यू कैन सी इट्स आंसर इन नेक्स्ट स्लाइड सी है ओके नाउ क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव इट सेज दैट इन ए बी सी एनालिसिस ए आइटम्स रिक्वायर so as I have told you earlier in ABC analysis analysis you can see we have a curve like this so this is of A category but this is B category and C category so A category items they are less in numbers but their price is of uh, they are they take seventy percent of investment so their cost is high they are taking seventy percent of the items so we do not want to Uh, ABC item should have low safety stock. We do not keep those items in uh, too much amount because they are their price is too much. Okay, so we do not keep them in a stock. So its answer will be A item should require low safety stock. We do not low safety stock means we do not keep uh, A category items in too much amount. They are, we are not keeping their huge amount because uh, you know that um, its cost is high. Seventy percent of those items are are investment. Uh, A items are taking seventy percent of the total investment. So we do not want to invest too much on A. That's why we take its amount as required. We do not keep its stock too much. Okay. So it its answer will be low safety stock. See here an explanation also I have shown here in ABC analysis A item required rigid and strict control and need to be stocked in smaller quantities. In ABC method of inventory control, group A constitutes costly items and valuable items, uh, and their cost or is of seventy five percent of the total capital invested invested in the inventory. That's why we do not keep too much stock for A category items because. they are, the they are of costly items they are of costly and valuable items that's why we do not keep their stock we keep just as needed okay we do we want low safety stock for a category items then we have next question question number 6 purification of inventory means so please guess what will be its answer please try 
बिफोर गोइंग अहेड प्लीज ट्राई इट्स आंसर वॉट शुड बी इट्स आंसर प्योरीफिकेशन ऑफ इन्वेंट्री मीन्स वॉट डू यू मीन बाई प्योरीफिकेशन ऑफ इन्वेंट्रीज वॉट शुड बी इट्स आंसर क्लीनिंग ऑफ इन्वेंट्रीज डिस्पोजिंग ऑफ इन्वेंट्रीज प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ इन्वेंट्रीज स्टोरिंग ऑफ इन्वेंट्रीज इन पिन सो वॉट शुड बी इट्स आंसर अकॉर्डिंग टू यू सो इट्स आंसर इज डिस्पोजिंग ऑफ इन्वेंट्रीज सो वॉट डू यू मीन बाई डिस्पोजिंग ऑफ इन्वेंट्रीज I have shown here explanation. Its explanation: the raw material of a particular specifications are stored in the inventory of particular for particular products. We used to keep some raw materials for particular uh, products. If the design of the product changes or the method of manufacturing changes, then some of the inventory may become obsolete and useless. If you are keeping some inventory and the design for that product and manufacturing method changes, then that inventory will become obsolete. It will be useless. So in that case, you will dispose of the. You will uh, remove those inventories because they are not needed now. So those uh, it, the inventories are known as disposing of inventories or purification of inventories, which are obsolete and useless because of change in product or change in manufacturing method. That's why those inventories are useless and obsolete. You cannot use them now. That's why we dispose those inventories, and this process is known as purification of inventories. Now we can move to next slide. What do you mean by large size of inventory is a sign of? What do you mean by large size of inventory? What what is indicate? It will indicate better planning, inefficiency, reliable control of vendors, or better scheduling. Please. Try it. Then we will see its answer. We will discuss its answer. Large size of inventory. If you are keeping too much stock, so what it will indicate to you? You can see it will indicate inefficiency. If you are keeping too much, you have large size of inventory. So it will. It is a sign of poor scheduling. You haven't scheduled your inventory properly. Insufficient planning. You haven't planned properly. And vendors are not well coordinated. You have ordered and you haven't coordinated anyone. You you are unaware of the inventory. Okay, so it is a sign of ineffic inefficiency. In next question, it is also related to A B C analysis, and I have discussed A B C analysis so many times, and it is uh, that's why its question is coming again and again so that you can uh, understand this A B C analysis inventory control method. An organization uses A B C approach for categorization of its stocks. They are categorizing. Inventories or stock on the basis of ABC analysis. So, which of the following describes Class C items? Please remember those things, as I have discussed earlier. This is a curve for ABC analysis. This is A category items, B category items, and then we have C category items. C category items are around seventy percent in numbers, but they are taking investment around ten percent. so only 10% of the total investment is used for c category items so which of the following four options define c category items high value and high risk low value and low risk you can say that yes it is of which category which option will be correct low value and low risk because they have low value because 70 but more than 70% of the total items is of cost of more than around 10% so there is they are of low value and they are of low risk because their cost is low so c option d option will be correct now we have ninth question this question is about dummy activities are used in network 2 what do you mean by dummy activities so in a project as in my previous lectures in my lecture 3 or in my lecture 4 i have discussed how to draw a network diagram in that in there i have discussed dummy activities in the basics and in the theories of net project management so dummy activities what are dummy activities how will you say or how can you say what why it is used and what is the use of dummy activity so option a is facilitate completion of slacks satisfy precedence requirements determine project completion time and avoid use of resources so please guess its answers or try if you remember it i have discussed dummy activities so many times in my lecture 2 and, and in lecture 3 So, dummy activities are those activities which are used to satisfy precedence precedence relationship or network diagram, so that we have a logical sequence of different activities. You can say here its option is B. Dummy activities that or it does not, and I have told you earlier also, it do not consume. It do not consume 
any time or resources as i have shown you here it do not consume any time or resources it is used to maintain logical sequence and it is used to in net in network to satisfy precedence requirements so dummy activity is nothing but is it is an activity which is used to satisfy requirements and it do not consume any time and do not consume any resources it is just used to satisfy logical relationship now we can move to next question this is question number 10 The critical path of a network is the path that takes. Now, please guess its answer. Try its answer. What do you mean by critical path? And what is critical path? Critical path of a network is the path that takes longest time. I have discussed this so many times in my previous lectures, and we have also find out. Uh, we have also discussed and find out critical path by considering one example. So, critical path of a network is the path that takes longest time. because longest time of any network will give us the project time so it is the longest path its answer will be b takes the longest time okay so critical path is the not is nothing but is the longest path which give us longest time and longest time will tell us the duration of the project by this much time we will finish the project so critical path for network is the path that takes longest time so till here we have discussed 10 questions so and remaining questions and remaining topics i will discuss in next lecture so this is this was my lecture fifth based on multiple choice questions for project management in my next lecture i will also discuss remaining questions of project management uh, if you have any doubt in any topic in any question you can comment or you can ask me directly i will try to solve your issues and i will also provide you pdf related to this lecture thank you